The Thermaltake View 71 Snow Edition shows off your build in style with a frosty white paint job and four tempered glass side panels. You also get two pre-installed 140mm ring white LED fans, a vertical GPU mount with bracket, and three-way radiator support for water cooling. So click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is a follow-up to my how to build an $800 gaming PC, and today I'm gonna show you how to set it up, get Windows installed, and get everything up and running. This is also part of my monthly builds series. Every month at the beginning of the month, I part out a couple PCs, then I build one of them, and then later in the month, I test it. Now this video is also meant as a refresh of my most popular video ever, which is uh, the first five things to do with a new PC build, which is an instructional tutorial video for anyone who has assembled a new computer and then is like, what next? How do I install Windows? How do I set up the UEFI? How do I make sure all the hardware is working properly? So today I'm gonna to walk you through all of that step by step. In order to get going, you're gonna need a few things. The new PC that you just built, of course, all put together in its glorious put togetherness. You're gonna to need a keyboard and a mouse. You're gonna need an internet connection, which I imagine you have if you're watching this video, but that's represented by either this RJ45 cable, which is coming over from my home network, or if you have Wi-Fi and a home router, you can connect to that. And I have a couple antenna because the motherboard I use has built in 802.11ac Wi-Fi, so you will also need another computer, laptop, or a desktop in order to download Windows 10 and put it onto a USB in order to make a Windows 10 installer, and then you will need a USB drive in order to win put Windows 10 on that. I recommend an 8 gig drive. You can go larger if you want. Just make sure there's nothing on that drive that you need to save because it's going to be formatted completely. Also, a quick aside here, we are installing Windows 10 today because it's a gaming PC and it's the most viable operating for gaming. Yes, Linux is also a thing and would be awesome to install too and Windows 10 sucks, but I'm not going to get into that for now. Windows 10 is what we're going with. So I'm just booting the system up for the first time and uh, did I mention you need a, a monitor too? I think that might go without saying, but you need a monitor as well to complete your whole setup for your new computer. As your computer is booting up, you're going to see a splash screen and often there'll be some instructions. Delete is almost always the button that you're going to want to tap. That'll let you access the UEFI, uh, also known as BIOS, which is the old name for it. And this allows you to at least first go in, just double check, reality check, make sure everything is appearing. So our processor that I installed is a 1600X. We can see that appearing here. We can see our memory, two sticks of DDR4, uh, four gigs, giving us a total of eight gigs. I'm also gonna go over to advanced and check our storage configuration. And here we can see that both of our drives are also connected, our SanDisk 240 gig, as well as our Western Digital one terabyte storage drive. That's pretty much the basics just to make sure everything is working. But if you want to be on the safe side, you can go over and load defaults. That'll make sure everything is default loaded up for the hardware that's detected. And then if you want to get fancy, you can go over here to OC Tweaker, uh, go to your DRAM and you can set up your XMP settings. Uh, if the memory that you got is compatible with the motherboard and the Ryzen processor that you got, you should just be able to load up this XMP settings. This memory I'm using is actually uh, rated 2666. So uh, the XMP that's showing up is 2733. That's good enough for me. So I'm gonna hit F10 to save and exit. Uh, and then the system is going to save that and reboot. Again, as it boots up here, we're gonna see a quick splash screen. And one of the things listed on the splash screen other than delete to enter the UFI is to hit F11 to bring up a boot list. And from here, we could uh, boot directly from our Windows 10 installer, but we haven't made that yet. So let's do that first. So that was step one, just making sure all the hardware is recognized and the UEFI is working. And of course, some quick advice on XMP settings. And then we're going to move back to our extra computer that we brought. So I'm just gonna use my desktop over here, plugging in the USB drive. And here's where we're gonna download the Windows 10 installer and put it on that USB drive. Again, remember that anything on the drive is going to be deleted, so double check to make sure that uh, nothing on there needs to be saved. I'll put a link down in this video description to the Windows 10 installer, but if you just search for Windows 10, downloading the ISO file is one of the first things that pops up. We can see Create Windows 10 Installation Media, so just click Download Tool Now, and that should download. Once it's downloaded, you can launch it, and it'll pull up this page that uh, starts getting a few things ready. Of course, we accept all of these licensing terms, and it's getting more things ready. We want option two here, create installation media via a USB flash drive. And uh, English Windows 10 64-bit are all okay with us. USB flash drive is gonna be our option. And here it has recognized the only USB flash drive that's eligible that's plugged into this system. But if you have multiple drives plugged in, double check and make sure that you're choosing the right one. Next again, and getting a few more things ready. Hit next again, and it will initiate the download progress for Windows 10. Here you can take a short break. Depending on your internet speed, this might take a few minutes. So we now have our Windows 10 installer USB. So I'm just gonna move this over and plug it into our new computer. 
And I'm going to power on the system and tap that F11, F11 button to bring up the boot menu. I also want to point out that not every motherboard has a shortcut to a quick boot menu like this, so you might need to go into the UEFI and go to your boot settings and change your boot device to this USB drive, and then after Windows is installed, you'll need to go and change that back. This method is just a little bit easier for a quick boot from our USB. Uh, also here, choose UEFI for this USB disk that you have just created, not standard USB. That'll make sure it uh, loads Windows 10 in UEFI mode. After a few moments, you'll see this screen. Uh, we're in the US, so we'll choose English US for everything and hit next. Uh, you can use this USB drive to repair your computer in the future if you ever have any issues with your Windows installation, so hang on to it, don't uh, throw it away. But for now, we're gonna hit install now, and then in just a moment, it's gonna give us two options. Again, it's gonna give us an upgrade option or a custom option, and we're gonna wanna choose custom. But before that, it wants a product key. We don't have one right now, so just click I don't have a product key. And then in the future, you can use my uh, Windows 10 for $20 video to buy Windows 10 product key and then apply it to uh, your Windows installation in order to have a full, legit installed copy. Alternatively, you can not activate your Windows and then you'll always have a watermark down on the bottom that says your copy of Windows 10 is not legitimate and it won't let you do all the personalization things that you want to. For now though, you probably wanna stick with either Windows 10 Home or Windows 10 Pro, depending on, on which license you're planning to buy in the future. I'm gonna go with Windows 10 Pro for this one more licensed terms that we definitely have read completely and agreed to. And then here's our choice of upgrade or custom. I usually don't use upgrade. You can upgrade, but custom is just always the best way to go. This will allow you to do a clean installation. Clean installation means everything that was potentially on that drive before is wiped and you have a fresh, clean, good smelling installation of Windows 10. And it's just always the best way to go. Get used to a clean installation of Windows 10 and setting it up for the first time because it doesn't take that much work. And this is like your ultimate fail safe for if you get a virus or something like that in the future. As long as you have your important documents saved and stored on an external drive or something like that, you can wipe everything, start over, and you're fresh and good to go. Now, I have two drives installed. Both of them have nothing on them, but if you are using a drive that's been used before, you might see partitions listed here. If that is the case, you should go to each one and hit delete on them. If you're having trouble getting Windows to install on your drive, go back to my first first five things to do with a new PC build video, and there I talk about loading up disk parts in this and uh, doing a clean on the drive to make sure that everything is good to go. For now though, we've got drive zero, unallocated space. This is our 240-ish gig SSD, 223 gigs formatted, so just double click on that uh, or hit next and it should start installing. So after the files are copied and uh, the little swirly ball swirls around a bit and it uh, does a few other things, it's gonna pop you up with this screen here. Let's start with the region. We're in the US, so uh, choose whatever region you're in and click next. There's a few other questions it's gonna ask you, like your keyboard layout. We're gonna stick with US. Uh, you can add an additional layout here. A lot of these are uh, accessibility things. If, uh, if you have a disability or need a special uh, human interface device, you can help set it up there. Um, from there, we'll go to connect you to a network though. We have already set up our Wi-Fi Wi-Fi antenna back here, and the Windows 10 installer that we just made has automatically recognized our Wi-Fi card, so it's picking up our internet. I'm gonna skip for now though, we'll wait to connect to the internet after uh, we go through this initial Windows setup. Next we get to choose a name, you can put your name or you can make up a name for your computer like 800-011, say $800-011 build. Sure. Next, it'll prompt you for a password. You should definitely, definitely create a password. I'm not gonna do one for right now, but make a password because you wanna keep your computer secure. Uh, next, it'll ask you if you wanna use Cort Cortana. No. No, we do not. Next, it will ask you to choose privacy settings, and here I pretty much turn everything off. This is simply to try to minimize the amount of uh, tracking information that Microsoft sends back to its servers about you. Um, you can keep this on if you wanna try it out, but I just like erring on the side of more privacy. And yes, there is other stuff that Windows 10 will send back telemetry data, even if you turn all that stuff off, but it's at least an initial way to tell Microsoft that you want them to track you as little as possible. Now we get to wait a few more minutes. And there we go, our basic Windows 10 installation is complete and I have just plugged in the ethernet cable uh, so I don't have to bother with a Wi-Fi password and it will ask you what you wanna do with the network. If you're on a uh, private home network, you can click yes to allow your PC to be discoverable if you wanna network between computers. Um, that's definitely something you wanna have turned on. The first thing I always do with a fresh Windows install though is check for updates. So if you just go and type in update in the search bar, you should be able to see Windows update, hit check for update 
updates, and this will make sure Windows is as up-to-date as possible. It'll probably have some antivirus definitions as well as maybe, oh look, a cumulative update as well. And depending on how new your Windows 10 installer USB is, you may have more or less things here to download. So here again, we're just gonna give it some time, let it download and install these. If it prompts us to restart, we're gonna restart. If we restart, we're gonna go back to Windows Update again and have it check again. Keep checking for Windows updates until you have all the updates and it says no more updates are available. So Windows updates are updated. Here's a few small things that I just like to do. I don't like the people bar thing, so I remove that. I like having this PC on the desktop. For that, uh, I gotta go to themes, and then you can find desktop icon settings over here and click computer. That will give us computer there. Our default browser is Microsoft Edge, and that has a single use, which is to go to google.com and download Chrome. Chrome will then prompt you to make it the default browser, which uh, you can do if you want. Uh, so cool, now we got Chrome installed. Go ahead and make that a link. And then once Chrome's installed, I like to make that a link on the taskbar, and then I like to remove Edge so it's not there irritating me. And there we go, pretty clean. Oh, and one other thing, if you pull up File Explorer, uh, go over here to View, click on Options. Open File Explorer to this PC, I find to be much easier, and then go over to View, and uh, I like to show hidden files and folders, do not hide empty drives, and do not hide extensions for known file types. I, I hate that, I hate that Windows. I wish they would make that default, uh, but there we go. Now Windows is mostly configured the way I want it to, but uh, we have a brand new motherboard installed, and that motherboard has some default drivers that Windows updates installed for it. So if you go up and right click on this PC and go to manage, uh, we can actually see our device manager and uh, device manager here will show us if there's any devices that don't currently have drivers. And actually Windows 10 has done a great job here of installing drivers for all of our hardware. If you have hardware that's not recognized, there'll be a little exclamation point with the triangle icon over it and that means you might need a driver for it. But just because we have default Windows 10 drivers doesn't necessarily mean they're the best drivers. So we're gonna double check for our motherboard and the graphics card to see if there's anything more up to date. So we're just gonna jump over to the ASRock website for our motherboard, the X370 Killer SLI AC, and you should go to the website of the manufacturer and model of whatever motherboard you are using if you didn't use this specific one. Go to support and then go to download. You'll notice there might be uh, updated UEFI or BIOS versions here that we can get. Uh, but down here we can see AMD all-in-one drivers. Uh, now Windows automatically installed some AMD drivers here. So if we right click on the desktop, we can go to AMD Radeon settings. We can click on the settings over here, we can actually see what's installed. So the Radeon software version we currently have is 17.1.1, 17.4 is what's currently available, so we'll go ahead and download that. And then beyond your chipset, which AMD lists as the all-in-one driver, you're probably gonna wanna check for audio drivers, uh, potentially Bluetooth and LAN drivers as well, but the chipset is really the main one. By default, your web browser should download to the downloads folder. So from here, we can go in. These are zip files, so we'll just need to extract each one. And then we can just run the installer executable in each one of these to update the drivers for uh, whatever we downloaded the drivers for. And there's also an 802.11ac Intel driver. Um, but again, the default Windows 10 drivers will mostly work just fine. It's just a matter of getting updated ones if that's something that you feel is needed. Remember when you're installing drivers, if you're ever prompted to restart, restart don't install other drivers. Do the restart first. You don't want uh, anything to be done out of order and it's better to be safe than sorry. Now the last driver we'll need is something for our graphics card and graphics card drivers are often updated pretty frequently so we want to make sure we have what's most up to date. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card like a GTX 1060, 1070, or 1080, you want to go to the NVIDIA website, NVIDIA drivers, tell them what you have and then go ahead and download. We have an RX 580 in here so pretty much the same procedure. Look up AMD drivers, go to the download download page. You can have it auto detect or you can tell it specifically. We have desktop graphics. We have a five, no, not 500 series, RX series, RX 500 series and Windows 10 64 bit. And here we can see the latest driver uh, was actually released on the 18th, just uh, almost two weeks ago. Go ahead and hit download. Uh, we're going to decline that survey opportunity. And when this downloads in just a second, we will install it. And with most drivers, it's pretty much the same procedure. You download the package, maybe you have to unzip it, run the installation executable, and then uh, wait a few minutes while it unpacks some things and does the installation. Pretty straightforward. All right, guys, this computer is almost 
good to go. Like setup, I, I love the initial setup for a new build because like it just, it feels so fresh. Everything is clean and fresh and there's nothing on here that doesn't need to be on here. But one last thing you might notice is missing here is that extra drive, the one terabyte hard drive that is also installed in this system. How do you access that drive if it is a brand new clean drive that's just been installed? For that, we're gonna go back over here to manage on my computer. We're gonna go down to disk management under storage, click on that and here we can see our disk one. So it is there, it's just there's no partition on it. It needs to have a drive partition with a drive number or drive letter uh, assigned to it in order for it to be recognized and show up in Windows 10. Now, depending on the status of your storage drive and what it's previously been used for, if you click on disk management, it might give you an immediate pop-up that says initialize disk, and that is if the disk is completely clean and fresh. It's totally fine if this pops up. I recommend choosing GPT over MBR. GPT is a little bit newer, and it's especially required if you're uh, going with a drive that's larger than two terabytes. But once it's initialized, you'll see this unallocated space. Just right click on that and go to new simple volume and it will take you through this wizard. I probably want to use the maximum amount of space available. Yes, you want a drive letter, format it using NTFS. I recommend a quick format, but if the drive has been used heavily before, maybe uncheck that and do a full format. Just bear in mind a full format's probably gonna take an hour to two or three, depending on the size of the drive. And I usually like to label the drive something I will recognize, so like one terabyte storage. Now we know that's our one terabyte storage drive. Hit finish, and if you chose quick format, it should pop up in just a second, uh, just as it did here. And now, again, we have a fresh, clean, open, completely empty one terabyte storage drive so we can load our games on there, maybe create a Steam library. If you guys want a little bit more follow-up on this, such as uh, setting up Steam, check out my three more things to do with a new PC build. It was actually made uh, a couple years ago, but it's still very relevant for some of that uh, content, especially taking games from Steam that you may have downloaded on another drive and bringing them onto your new system. But guys, that's all for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. Uh, if you did, definitely hit the thumbs up button, share this video if you know any new or first time PC builders who want to get their system set up and they're not quite sure the proper steps and procedures to do that right. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time.